Well, good morning everyone. We change of venue today. I'm at home, not in Greenfield. But it's good to welcome you and I pray this short time together will be of help to you this morning. This is the day then that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together, wherever we may be today. Thank you for your faithfulness and love that have brought us to this very hour of the day. And as we come, Lord, may the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Be with us then. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A familiar reading today from the Gospel of Luke. On one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as you love yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring out oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. The parable of the Good Samaritan is so well known to us. And yet it contains a real truth and challenge to us. It's a story of kindness and care, of not passing by on the other side. The Levite and the priest did just that when they saw this man in dire need at the side of the road. Can you just think of that for the moment? These were religious people, hierarchical people, in the terms of Judaism and faith. And yet a Samaritan came along, the dreaded Samaritan, deeply hated by the Jews. But that didn't matter. He went and he helped this man. He bathed his wounds, took him to an inn and cared for him, paid the innkeeper some extra money so that he could look after him. And he said, I'll be back soon to make sure that he's okay. And if you need any more money, then I will pay you up then. What a wonderful story. You know, there's an old song that says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, my living will not be in vain. And that's the emphasis of this story of going that extra mile, of taking care and kindness, of getting alongside someone who's in need and, and being there for them. When you think about the story, that's what it's all about. And we can do that as well. We can get alongside those who perhaps are going through difficult times, those who are in need, those who are bereaved. That's the very nature of our ministry in the church, surely, to care for others and to be the means of showing God's love to others, even those we do not know, even those perhaps who can be stroppy with us and those who perhaps think we're a bit strange for even contemplating doing that sort of thing in this age that is so impersonal and different to the needs of so many. But that is our calling and it is Christ who calls us to do that. I couldn't help thinking this week uh, when hearing the death of the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. He was a man in many ways that often said the wrong thing but he had a deep personal conviction regarding the environment and he established, of course, the, um, the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, which meant that many young people had opportunities of, of service and, and commitment. It meant that others could get alongside people, young people who were in need and, and be mentors and, and to be those who would put them on the right path. That is caring. In terms of the environment, he called the spiritual leaders, world faith leaders together on one occasion, outlining their, the responsibility he felt they had for the environment and for the future in terms of climate change and other challenges that were arising at that time. I know that that's an example of, of many people we have known, but during this week, and we do remember his life, we are grateful for that. And of course, our prayers and sympathy are with the royal family at this time, 
especially Her Majesty the Queen and the loss that she has suffered. And so the example of Jesus remains, and we can follow that example. Our ministry is one of care and kindness. It must be. And really, people don't come to church as they used to, do they? Do they in this day and age? But, you know, someone said to me at one occasion, if people don't read their Bibles, they do read us as Christians. Let us show the love of Jesus. The love that is tolerant and understanding. The love that forgives and makes all things new. The love that goes that extra mile and commits itself to the care of others. Our neighbour who lives next door or our neighbour who lives at the other side of the world. That's our calling and that's what Jesus calls us to do. To do. So it is in being encouraged that we can make a difference in the lives of others. Others we see perhaps talent and potential for good to encourage those along paths way who are feeling down and bereaved and lonely and sad. Dear friends, let's do what Jesus says. Because he said to the man who asked the question, well, what shall I do? And Jesus answered, go and do likewise. In other words, be like the good Samaritan. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are near to us today, wherever we may be. Thank you for your promise that in Jesus you have given us the assurance of life in his fullness. Lord, you have called us to serve you in this world of which we are a part. And as your church and as your people, we thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity of helping those who are in need. Inspire us in the power of the gospel. Lead us in the way of the Holy Spirit, that we might seek to do the will of Jesus in the world. Help us, Lord, when we are called to help and support, never to pass by on the other side, but to do what we can, where we can and when we can. And Lord, in this impersonal and indifferent world, where so much evil prevails, we thank you, Lord, that Jesus came and he stood alongside us, that he loved us, he died upon the cross for our sins and was raised on that first Easter Sunday that we might know that he is with us, encouraging us, inspiring us, speaking words of gentle peace to our hearts. Lord, we thank you that we do not stand alone as we seek to do his will. Lord, be with your church in many lands today where there is great persecution. Be with those who are serving overseas as missionaries and those who are heralders of the good news who are often putting their lives on the altar of service, Lord, who are standing by the, the, the dejected, those who are hungry, those who are in need. Oh, our Father, we pray that you will prosper their work. And Lord, be with us now, wherever we may be. Thank you for the love of Jesus that meets with us and grant us the peace of his presence to each new day. So hear our prayers, Lord. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, dear friends, for allowing me to be part of your day today. I pray that you will have a good day. We thank God for last Sunday where we were able to come back to church to worship together. And what a joy it was to see friends, old and new, come together to worship the Lord. But these times are also precious to us. And we thank God for this opportunity of sharing with you, wherever you may be today. You too are very much part of our church family. May God bless you and keep you in his love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. <laughs>